thank you for joining us on this episode of Diaspora Lounge. We're talking about Onyeka Omwenu, the icon that we just lost just this last week, and everybody's celebrating her. One thing that I know is it's obvious that we don't celebrate people when they're alive. I can just imagine if all these videos that are flying around now about her were flying around last year or five months ago, how it would have touched her. Isn't that what joy is? Knowing that you're impacting people's lives and that you're so much appreciated. But now that the person has passed, we're doing all this. She doesn't even get to know about it. It's her dead body and it's just, um, it shows us while we're alive that if we do things that impact other people's lives, it's great. This is what we know is going to happen after our passing. But it's so much better, even now on this, on the Aspara Lounge, when people reach out and send messages of how topics that we've covered are in impacting their lives positively. It gives me so much joy. And I think that we should do that more often. Let me see. I'm sure that the panelists that I have here are also lovers of Onyeka. Let me get them in and let's just talk a little about this. Hello. Yeah. Who else is pained with the passing of Onyeka Owenu? I'm pained. It just feels like, um, it's, you know, like the pain I felt when uh, Whitney, Whitney Houston died. Mm. I just adored her. I just wanted to sing like her. I mimicked all of it in distant songs growing up. So her death hits me hard. And I mean, just recently, I think maybe sometime in March, you know, one of my close friends from when I was like six years old, just sent me a recording of it in Houston and she was like, they just reminded me of you. So it's not just that I love her and I kept it to myself. Everybody around me knew I love her, mm -hmm. you know. But when it comes to Onika, I feel a slight sense of guilt because I never, I mean, she was living it. You know someone that knows someone that knows her. I never... I guess you just feel so on the alone forever. I guess you just feel well, she didn't make her. She didn't go nowhere. You know, I'll always, I'll always watch her movies. I'll always watch her on TV. i always watch her songs, you know. And then this happens, and it's like all oh, her songs just keep playing in your head, you know. And when was the last time you played her music on your own? That is the problem. I did not even know that she did a recording of Sissy Wyman's um, um, <laughs> Good to Me. Uh, that song, I said, you know. I'm just I, hearing that. I, I, my sister sent it to me. The remix she did of that song, The Lord is So Good. I said, it was so wonderful. She put in, oh. her, she put in her own thing, her own twist to it. Oh, and yes, thank you to me. I'll send it to you. So I'm like, why did it take her death for me to begin to remember her music, to remember her films, you know? I watched her, I mean, I think I went to the cinema to work up Balam some, a year or two years ago. The one she did with that. Nancy. Send that to me. It's a, it's a movie she did that was in the cinema. She did it with Nancy, Nancy Cine and um, um, that man, or, or, or Sophia. I just know him as Sophia. I don't know his name. Oh, yeah. And you know how you've watched Onika? She did that movie with um, um, Genevieve. Um, uh, a movie with Genevieve, Sha, it was so good. She has just, I've always loved, I mean, right from the early 80s when I started discovering her, I love her diction. I love how well She's very talented. I love, I love how well spoken she was. I loved her courage. I love how she carried herself with, you know, she was, she's what a young girl aspires to be, I mean, you want to be as bold as she is, you want to be as right as she is, she wants to be as beautiful as she is, and um, a woman who knows her own, who has come into her own. I mean, I saw her as a woman that, in as much as she was, and there was lots of, I mean, we never knew anything about her personal life. And that's something, I don't know how she pulled it off. You know, it's only in her death I found out that she had two friends. I never knew she was, I never knew she got married any time. 
She never talked about her personal life. She never divulged any information. And there was no, there was, you know, apart from a few seconds, I mean, I know I had one woman one time that she was about to like, eh, then I had another woman too. You know, I heard that you know, she you got married to a girl. You know all the stories now, you know? But I'm like, why did I have to now begin to remember and appreciate her after she died? After her passing. After her passing. I mean, every, I mean, social media has afforded this opportunity to have access to people. I mean, why don't I just slide into her DM and say, oh man, mother, uh, excuse me, ma, you've blessed me since I was a child. You've inspired me, you've motivated me. I mean, I think... I think we should give people their flowers while they are alive. Mm-hmm. I don't like all this celebrating people and singing their praises. They're dead. They're gone. Mm-hmm. When they are alive, did you acknowledge? Did you acknowledge the role they played in your life? Did you ask, did you did you celebrate them? You know. I mean, I, lately, anytime it's my dad's birthday. I always use the opportunity to write something really remarkable because I'm like, look, okay. and I keep, and I tell him, Daddy, I'm not gonna be one of those children that on your passing, I'll start singing your praises and telling the whole world how you're. You tell him this. I said, Daddy, I'm gonna tell you now that you're alive. Now that I have access to you, you've been so good. You've been a, you've been a hero. You are my hero. You know, I said, and I mean, I remember his last birthday. I mean, I called him and I was like, Daddy, I mean, I have so much. But I'm just going to pray for you and I'm going to bless you. You know, and by the time I was done, my dad was like, I had given him the best birthday gift. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you, you, know so, you know, you want people to, you know, I mean, to so know that you appreciate them. Yes, let them know you appreciate them while they're alive. Mm-hmm. You see all this collaboration we do in Nigeria where, you know, when the person is alive, you don't even send pocket money to the person. It's not in Nigeria. It's life. You don't even you 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 remember to send money to the person to eat or to buy a dress for themselves or to take themselves out to have a nice time. But as soon as the person dies, all the money that you refuse to spend on the person throughout their lifetime, it, it shows up who you buy cow. But well, doesn't it mean that you really don't care enough? Doesn't that no, I think I, that it means that you really don't care enough? Um, can you really be that we don't care or either that people, or maybe the two people granted that the person will be around forever? Okay. Yeah. Maybe the two people granted that the person will always be around. And I think or maybe you feel that what you hear is not of, enough. Yeah, we think a lot of time, a lot of times that spending after that is out of guilt, if I'm not to be honest. To kind of make up and compensate and overcompensate for what you do not do for the person when the person was alive. Because I don't get how someone will be very ill. You are the person's child. You are all over the clubhouses in Lagos. No, no, no. You are, you are taking that thing to a different um, dimension. No, no, no. If you're doing I want, all that, I want to go there. you can't, you can't really go. genuinely care and be doing I want that. To go there. You're spending money buy more for the everybody there. <laughs> no, my mama is at home. Yeah, but that means you don't care now. So leave it there. Just leave it there. That's what it means. It means you don't care enough. That's all it is. Right? Can you don't love their mom or their dad? Yes, well, what else do you want to call it? That's what it is. And don't forget that these people have their relationships. <laughs> They know what their relationship dynamic is about. Just because somebody is somebody's parent or somebody's child doesn't mean that love dwells there. You know so. Mm. You know that. So um, you, you can see someone doing that and not showing care towards their child or towards their parents. You can't tell them you have to care because we don't know what their relationship is about. So you don't dynamics, yeah. So it just it just tells you that something is off or something is wrong with the relationship. And to tell you, to tell you how much impact she made, that song she sang with Sonia Day, mm-hmm. I, I was a teenager when she released that song. Mm-hmm. If you love me, you can wait for me. Mm-hmm. Wait for, I said, do you know 
look at that thing, had such an indelible mark. You know, yes, your parents bring you up with values. Yes, sure, you, 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 many, I mean, even long before I got saved, I heard that song. But I always just had it at the back of my mind that if a guy is really crazy around me, he will be patient. He will wait for me. He doesn't have to eat the cookie before the, you know, before the right time. You know, he will be patient. And he's trophy. He will be patient. You know, and I really contributed to that, right? When you can, when you can, sorry, that song, yes. that song she sang, it left, I mean, I don't know about other ladies, I don't know about other young teenagers, but it left an indelible mark in my life. It's yeah. all, you know how, you know, it's always before you are saying, if you love me, you go wait for me. So anybody that is coming around, any shesha fly, any biscuit and sweets guy, who is looking for physical things, you just quickly say, everybody, everybody, you don't love me, because if you love me, you wait for me. So that message has been yes. sent to you from a song when you were very young. I have to confess, mm -hmm. yeah, I have to confess that actually the reason why I even thought of doing this this topic, do you know that Oyeka is um, actually from the same village as my mom and my family, they know her. So I never got to meet her personally, but I didn't, I didn't even think about it in this way. And it was a friend, a friend of mine, Glory, she might see this. She was the one who said, you know, this lady actually impacted my life. And she mentioned this song that you're talking about. She said exactly the same thing. And that's what reminded me that actually it's true. We used to think about that song. And then she said, look at all the celebrations now. We don't even celebrate people while they're alive. Imagine if we had done this when she was alive. And now look at what we're doing. All of us were impacted by her songs. And... We love her. And then on the she doesn't even see what we're doing. And then so, you know, I just remember her when she was doing this kind of dance, you know, dancing in the sun. It just showed me, showed me someone who was happy. Who loved me. Oh, you talk now. Turn your ear talk. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. And she goes dancing. And carried dance. away. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. You know, she just... Ah. Oh. Yeah. So, so, yeah, she really touched our lives, eh? Well, um, I'm gonna f I'm gonna approach this from a different view. But before then, I agree with majority of what you guys are talking about. I mean, it's a good thing to celebrate people, um, when they are alive. And thankfully, I celebrate my mom. My mom told me, if I die today, I think I am good. And I think words that we give to people when they are alive give them longer life mm -hmm. them the hope. you know it gives them this um comfort that to know that they are well loved mm -hmm. and so we do this because i mean i am let me just say i'm privileged enough because i am not close to where my mom is i'm i'm here in north america my mom is still way back home but i still will not forget bringing my mom over here and spoiling her. She told me one day said, why am I treating her like she's a child? I said, mom, because she treated me like You're that when baby. I was a kid. <laughs> she said, just pampering her like I'm, I said, mom, you pampered me. It just don't complain about it because if only I can throw or play back everything you've done when I was young, you will understand why this is coming back. She will look at me it's like, and she will, pray and bless me and all those things mom all those they mean a lot she is equally uh what would i say uh giving me a befitting words that i'll take with me to my grave mm -hmm. as i do to her as all my brother my siblings because they raised us that way and most times we all have a zoom whatever and we pray and we bless our mother even right there and sometimes she ends up crying i said mom as long as there are cries of joy we appreciate mm -hmm. with crying you know so but this is all part of what you're talking about and which is something that i don't want to turn my back on and which is something that i wish that my own children could see this understand this kind of love that is hard to explain. It's just right in there. You don't need to copy. You don't need to be taught. You just need to know it because you are in it, because you see it became part of you. And so you know that it is something that needs to be done. It's like almost like a natural thing, you know? And, 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 and for those that don't understand it, 
they can now learn it and it will put that in their lives but I mean, I the difficulty um seeing that i mean if love is there love is there especially with family if 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 it's not if it's not being expressed if it's not being expressed then something is off i don't mm. I don't, I don't i don't see how you this is not a conversation that you it's a conversation it's not a conversation that you have like <laughs> love me or don't love me i just feel that for families love is better if i may there mm. are aged parents who feel alone who feel neglected by their older children children in their 50s 60s mm -hmm. 30s mm -hmm. And um, there's, there's an epidemic of loneliness among those in their 70s and 80s. And um, the children don't have patience for them. They call their children and keep calling. They don't pick their calls because the children have the attitude that, oh, they're going to talk about a mundane, irrelevant thing. Or they're going to repeat the same thing they talked about the last time. And I, I mean, I mean, there was a time I had to do like a series, you know, as in a writer that look, when did we stop having time for our older parents? When did we stop having time for the octogenians, for those in the seventies and the eighties? And when we were younger, they something. when we were younger, they poured their lives in us. They spent their time with us. Now they are old. We've abandoned them with caregivers. You just think you've paid someone to take care of them. You've paid someone to cook their meals. You've paid someone. That person is not going to keep them company. That person is not there. Well, they know. They, the person who is doing that knows. They just don't care enough. So if I, I will say what I will say at this point is if you actually have a kind of I love lonely old people. Lonely. If you have a kind of relationship with your children and you notice it, um you, you you there are two things you 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 should do or actually there's one thing you should do and there are two things that we could do we could either ignore it and be hoping for the best or you actually call your child and have a conversation you, so uh, our background we're not we don't get very vulnerable right but this is what we should do because i i think i told i don't know i don't know if it was you i told no, I, I think I told you that one day I had a conversation with my daughter because I was actually looking, it was showing on me that I, I wasn't feeling happy. And she asked me, Mom, what's wrong? And at first I thought, what is the point in having this discussion? Because, because I expect, you know, a natural thing to just be there. And then when she asked again, she insisted, Mommy, what is wrong? Why do you look like that? And then I said, it's because of you. <laughs> it's because of you, yes. And then she said, what? Why? And then I explained, I feel hurt because this, this, that, that. And I know that I could never have that kind of position with my mom. This is the way it looks to me when you do this and when you do that. And then she said, oh, no, this, this, that, that. She felt bad. And she explained, no, I didn't really understand that it would look like this, that, that, that. You know, so it's good for us to have those conversations. Imagine if she hadn't asked me, mommy, what's wrong? I, I was thinking that I would have that conversation, but I'm not sure. I'm not really sure that I would have. But again, I'm not sure that I wouldn't have because I get very vulnerable because I don't want to stay with pain. So I express myself. I express myself because... I don't I want to take down that wall that is between us. So I always want the communication to be there. So that's what we should do as parents if you feel this wall between you and your children. That's it. They don't they cannot even get these children on the phone to have that conversation. No, but before it got to that point, because before the children went away, you would have noticed that there wasn't that closeness that there should have been. So it's it's something about your background. This, this is what I want to. This is what I want to try. This is what I want to drop here. Relationships change. Relationships are very natural. You don't. There are things. There are something they say about unspoken words, and words that are spoken. Mm -hmm. When unspoken words come into effect, it's when you've done everything. It, it, 
it's not something you put in you that to say i have done everything i could no it's a natural thing that you've done it that relationship that symbiotic relationship between parent and kid it's yeah. just so natural that when one pulls away from the other cannot be completely pulled out of that if mm -hmm. there's this thing that is still holding this bond that is there it's like something i have to suckle on something i have to because i have grown i've gotten used to always having this evening night time chat with my mother or my parents because i'm used to doing this every so so and so time with them at such a so uh, such and so time of the day or year or week when you leave there's always that hunger to want to keep doing that i mean even if you stay for two two weeks three weeks four weeks a part of you feel that there's something that is not being nurtured and then you pick it pick up your phone mom do you remember i think i miss this if we establish that and keep doing because that's how me and my parents well, we and our parents were that every sunday not to talk of what we do every day but every sunday my dad my mom we sit we talk one bible one faith and then we talk about us i think every time every sunday no miss and so when i left i felt that emptiness it's not just my going to church no there's still the other part which is my church bonding with my my, my, my family so it's one of the things that created that bond thing that but if you never you had that if they never created it in the first place you, you then that's you, when you can now you talk children, you children yeah. wouldn't even have had that in the first place that's right but sometimes so that, parents have created it and uh, then, then the situation you're talking about mm. please welcome and pardon me i'm eating i can't stand I, i'm just having a but for uh -huh. people that are for people that don't understand i am african and i'm having a local food called Eba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so understand okay, okay? so but okay Andre, you were going to say something i was going to say you know um having your, putting your aged parents old people's homes is falling to us in our culture mm. um i belong to a group of uh, a fellowship i belong to we've been going to visit me so i like this thing you're doing <laughs> with the hey, man, you're making me hungry i like this thing like, you're doing tony <laughs> i'm sorry no, don't say that don't say that i'm 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 just eating i'm i'm very yeah, hungry i just said i like that one go ahead we're going to visit old people in the old people's home and hey, your audio your audio okay now uh -huh. okay and it's been funny to me as in who puts their parents in old people's home in Nigeria? You know, because like for so how? You know? I'm like, is bad enough. You have that old people's homes? Are they putting yeah. people in, in Nigeria? Yes, they actually have old people's homes. And they're putting them there? Yes, and I'm like, it's it's bad enough that we adopted the culture of hiring right. Have this thing they call carers where you hire a young uh, nurse or you put a driver a nurse and a cook with your aged parents alone in one mansion you know there have been so many stories of how these three people connive and take all the money of those old people tie them up get the password of their bank details are you being realistic no but are you being realistic no there have been so many stories no, i mean are you being realistic in saying that that is a bad thing think about the situation no, i'm not saying it's a bad thing i'm saying what society has become is these children are not available for their parents home and live with them in their homes because growing up is natural that grandma comes to live with us because many people have traveled out of that's the country what, because of the state of the nation you. i'm trying to tell you that the reality is that most of these children live abroad or live out of out of state or out of country so they have no choice but to either hire what and um, caregivers for the aged parents or to put their aged parents in care homes 
Men <laughs> have to go see the old people, take food because we're like, let's go and take, let's take supplies to them, let's take food to them, and everything. Mm-hmm. And just getting in there, I just saw the standoffish way and the way the um, so the supposed carers in this home spoke to a very aged woman who was using a walking stick to get into the bathroom. The tone, the 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 accent. I just felt pain because I was like, this woman has children and grandchildren, but she's living with strangers who are not treating her properly. And then the other day, I had the misfortune of watching a video of a caregiver who, the lady was in a wheelchair, she was meant to be her caregiver in the home, and she beat her, beat her twice, and toppled her over onto the floor and walked away. I don't think she realized that there was a camera videoing her. There is there have been so many cases of abuse of these old and aged people. You understand? So I'm like, in as much as you want to do right by your old and aged parents, you know, as in have you passed the days where their relatives who are genuine that can actually live with these people? Are we gone past that? I'm talking about giving flowers when people are alive. I have made up my mind that because I lost my mom when I was 30, uh, I think 33, 32, you know, and we had our ups and downs when, we, when she was alive, you know, and I always live with the pain that while I had the opportunity, did she really know how much I cared? There's no point crying, I love, I love, I love after death. That's medicine after death. While the person is alive, show the person how much you love them. Show them how much you appreciate them. And I'm not talking just about giving gifts and then sending money, you know? I mean, I know something my dad always appreciates is whenever I come home from Lagos when I was in Nigeria or come home from here now, I'll go into his room and take my time and you know I think you know there's a touch when your child puts your room in together. Together. Mm-hmm. You put this one and then I'm like, okay, he needs a shelf for this particular type of thing. And you know, okay. uh, you know, so so you know, it's that extra mile, that extra something. It means so much to them, you know. And then if there's a particular meal your father or your mother likes, especially if it comes the way you particularly prepare it, you know, I mean, what will it cost you, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, Let me just, just throw this straight to Aji. See my thumbs. <laughs> wow, what? It's in the back. <laughs> it's not stained. That's thumbs up. Good, yeah. good thought, eh? What are the three things? Three things most important in our life, um, um, celebrating uh, in, in, in anybody's life, your birth, the marriage, your death. It's true, sometimes people don't celebrate, I mean, don't, uh, some people celebrate people when they are alive in a different way. And some people have to celebrate them when they are gone. It's just something that we can't erase. If I'm not there when you're dead, and then I hear this guy or this person has passed. It's true, I wasn't there, but everything inside of me that has to do with my relationship with you when you are alive, it's what plays itself out. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I start remembering everything good because I wasn't there. I am over here. But then that's why sometimes people sing praise. I think the one that Uzo kept on talking about is when people are close and have the opportunity to really be around those that they love as to say, give a helping hand. Why are we not doing it? But to, um, to vouch for a lot of people, it's just a natural thing that when we are born, we are not, some people are not the one we are born, but they are itching to hear the news. And then when the news comes, everybody thankfully praises God. It's a natural phenomenon that we give thanks. A natural phenomenon that we are grateful. They are married. They are bonded together. 
because that child is grown to be a man. Now it's time for that procreation that God has given to us to continue. Now this person has done his job. He's gone. She's gone. I am not there, but I've heard everything good about him. But when I have time, even when he's still alive, and I have the opportunity to visit with this person, do I do it? That's the question we'll be asking ourselves. Or do I excuse myself with a lot of all those things? Oh yeah, I have time, I go visit, we remember old times, I go home. That right there is that giving honor to that person when he's still alive. It doesn't have to be when, um, any other way. Um, I don't have to kill a goat or a cow just to have a seat with you and drink. Just be nice. Live every minute of your life doing what you are supposed to do, visiting with people, with friends. If Ozo is in town and knows that I'm here and said, ah, oh, I'll go to see Tony without some other time. Oh, I'll go. And then goes back. You know what? If I die tomorrow, Ozo is going to, oh my God, I want to be there and I should have gone. I will come in spirit and say, what did you talk about that on video? In fact, I'm going to attack you 10 times a day. <laughs> just saying, just to, just to add humor to it anyways. But these are the kind of thing. This is an instance of what it means to honor people while they are still alive. You know, have time, visit with them, talk, and then, and then you've done it. Yes. What happened to visiting? What happened to visiting with people? When did we get so swamped that we don't have time? We have phones. If I think, excuse me, you see this phone? We have phones and it makes you feel close even when you're... It, when you it, is, so it is so deceptive. It makes you like in communication. It is so deceptive. Thank you, Ajuri. I am with you on that one. <laughs> face to face. That's when you know the truth. <laughs> if you just keep on my deceivo, my, my bobo. bobo. Yes, because, uh, you know, my sister was saying that she was trying to get in touch with her godmother. And every time she sent a message, every time she tried to even talk on the phone, somebody else would answer the phone and say she, something, something, give an excuse that she couldn't talk with her. And then when they were in that, when they were in the same city where she could have seen her, they were still hearing excuses. Then she started saying, I don't, I think something is off. I think something mm. was up. The next thing we now heard was that she had passed. You see? So, yes. So, you, you are not able to talk to the person, but you feel that you can always reach them. And people can hide once they know that with the phone there, they can claim, oh, right now I'm busy, or right now I'm at a meeting, or something, or something. But if it was before when you would go there, you have to go there or arrange a meeting, and you don't see the person. When you see the person, you, now, you can know this person is close to death or something. Yeah, I'm still very old school. Though. I find you, find you. I will look for you. Hmm. I, said, I don't. I, I mean, why are you my friend? Why are you my family? If I can't touch you, if I can't hug you. Anyway, so let's um yeah. So hmm. so this yeah, this so it's a reminder for us, right? It's a reminder for us. Yeah, because even right now, just remember, I just sent my brother a message because there's a there's someone close to us that he has sent me a message before saying, can I give your number to this person? Because this person was asking for your number and I wanted to ask you first. And I was like, of course, please, I really want to be in touch with this person. And I just remember now that I never got that number and I never got a call. So I just sent him a message now. Send me this person's number because I never heard back from you so that I can because this is someone that I actually love and I want to be in touch with the person. Yeah, so this is a reminder for us to... Man, Tony, what soup is that, though? Keep the communication open. I'm so sorry. I was going to show the show, show the viewers my soup, but... Oh, but you finished it. Now. Have you finished, it, you finished it? It, 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 it? It's vegetable soup. I made vegetable soup and then I made a goosey soup. Too, so I mixed both of them, just a little bit of both. Hmm. <laughs> What kind of protein? On your riri, sometimes your riri I, sometimes I don't know <laughs> if I cooked what I'm eating because it's it's just like wow, just enjoy it. Just don't even <laughs> think about it. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Okay, let's talk about the Nigerian situation, huh? Let's end this one now. Thank you for being with us on this episode. Uh yeah, so that conversation is a reminder for all of us to communicate, to show our love, be let's be more expressive of our love and also 
if something is amiss in a relationship, let's actually be vulnerable to express it because our culture is one where we, we kind of withhold expressing ourselves. And this is one of the things that kills relationships. We should be able to express ourselves. Open your mouth. If you're not happy with the way the relationship is, if you feel like it's stagnating, open your mouth. And don't expect that the other person knows how you're feeling because sometimes they are wrapped up in their own life and whatever they're dealing with and they may not realize that you're feeling so hot in your corner so open your mouth me i open my mouth so i want you to open your mouth as well okay so thank you for being with us on this let's go and talk about the nigerian situation and that's part of what is breaking down our relationships with our family all right end of discussion